one of the premises for a number of years we've had is that HR needs to create value. I should start by saying I am delighted to be here. Thank you for the privilege of letting me join you. Uh, it's an honor to be part of this great conference. If HR creates value, it's not what we do that creates value, it's what other people get. And for years, HR's value creation has been around the employees. If we do good HR work, our employees will be more productive. Our organization will implement our strategy. What we're now discovering is that organizations don't succeed just by having productive employees and a good strategy. They succeed by serving customers, investors, and communities outside the company. And so our view is that HR should now begin to connect and align their work to the customer, to the investor, and to the community outside the company. The failure in value delivery is often when we focus on what we do, not what we deliver. Um, for example, if somebody's in sales or marketing, they said, today I worked very hard. I made 10 cold calls, I had three client presentations, and I had two marketing research pre presentations. Well, the question is, did you sell anything? The same is true in HR. We often do training, we do staffing, we do compensation, and the question is, what happens as a result of doing that? Ten years ago, we used to measure training by the percent of people who got 40 hours of training. Well, that's an activity, not an outcome. It's not a value. What I love to say is, did those 40 hours of training cause customers to buy more product from you? If so, that's where HR is beginning to deliver more value, by connecting what we do to the outside customer. What I see is HR people today getting very, very passionate about talent. We want to manage talent. We want committed employees. We want engaged employees. What I hope we can get them to do is to connect that employee to the customer and to the investor. For example, most publicly traded companies have a stock price. They have investors who look at the company. Are we talking to those investors about our engagement scores? about our retention scores, about our productivity indices, because the investors will have more confidence in our company if they see that we manage our people very well. That's the inside connected to the outside. I don't say don't do talent, don't do retention, don't do productivity, but connect it to the customers where we work. It's a great comment, and the uh, and the test I love to give for those who love football. Do you play football? Occasionally. Occasionally. I am not a football expert, but 20% of the time, yeah. the leading scorer is on the team that wins the game, and it's true in basketball. 20% of the time, the leading scorer in the National Basketball Association is on the team that wins the National Basketball uh, Championship. World Cup, soccer is the same. Uh, hockey is the same, rugby is the same. Talent, 20% of the time, great people will succeed. But 80% of the time, how they work as a team becomes more successful. In fact, in some cases, you may want a little less good talent and much better teamwork. A friend of mine at Microsoft told me the story. When they were hiring, one option they had was to go to 20 universities and get the number one student great intellectual capital, or to go to one university and get 20 students. In the first choice, you get higher IQ and very talented people, but they don't form a team. In the second case, the 20 people from one school work well as a team. They found the second option is generally better because our people work well together and they connect with each other. And that talent with teamwork is where we want to be successful. I think you've got to have that. You've got to have your high potentials. We argue it's about 10 to 15 percent of your people that they have skills and they can lead the company and they're ready to take it to the next step. Those are the A players. But you've also got to manage the B players. How do you get the other people to work well with them? Because if there's a split, 
ultimately what you create is a revolution. You have, excuse me, you have the top people doing a very good job but not connected with the rest of the people. What you want is talent to work well together. In some ways, it's like a great marriage. And you've told me you have a great marriage. Your wife has talent, you have talent, and when they come together, they create a wonderful bond that makes the whole more than the individual parts. And that's what we're trying to create with teamwork as well as talent. Great question. Because what we should do in HR is be aware of how the team works. We should come in and say, we've identified four characteristics of a high performing team. Does this team have a clear purpose? Do we know what we're trying to do? Does this team govern itself well? Do we make decisions? Do we work well? Do we govern well? Does the team have good relationships? Do we work well with each other? Do we care about each other? One of the keys to a relationship is do we manage conflict well? And how well does the team learn? Is it constantly improving? And a good HR person can do a team audit around uh, purpose, governance, relationship, and learning. And every two to three months, make sure that the team is progressing and doing their job well. This was one of the most difficult choices I've had. There were nine finalists, and any one of the nine would have been outstanding. I got it down to three, and then Hertz seemed to have a couple of things. Their solution was integrated. It wasn't one piece, it was an entire set of HR practices. Number two, it was very linked to business results. They showed a financial result both in training and recruiting that showed the business change. They were connecting their HR work to the business in an aligned and an integrated way. And they were innovative in some of the work they did. They were an exceptionally good company. They weren't the only one, but their alignment, their integration, and their innovation was just outstanding. I think it's actually easy. Deliver value. That's it. Now, you get underneath that. One is, you have to know what value is. So who are we serving? It's not what I do, it's what somebody else gets. And it's not just thinking about value, it's delivering value. It's, it's adding value. It's doing something that helps somebody else succeed. And so the comment I'd have with HR people is, don't start with what I know. Start with what somebody else needs to know to be successful. And if I can help them in that success, then I've delivered value or added value to what they're doing. Professor Ulrich, thank you very much. Thank you, Mihai. Wonderful interview. Thank you so much.